Previously on MasterChef, Seven. Whitney and Lee battle it out in the semifinals. Three, sausage, two, sausage, one, and go! Stop. I think at the end of the day, I got to go with my heart. And Lee, that is yours. Congratulations. Thank you. Good job. That's one nothing, Whitney. If you lose this next plate, you're leaving MasterChef. Lee, your dish is impressing me. Although I got to give this one to Whitney. Congratulations. Excellent. Chicken. That's 1-1. One, one. Next, it's the battle of the cheesecakes. <laughs> Lee, that looks a classic baked cheesecake, New York style, topped with a rhubarb compote stroke puree. What else is inside the rhubarb? There's um, butter and sugar, obviously, and infused uh, ginger. Whitney, explain the blackberries around the outside. What have you done with them? The blackberries have been cooked in a little sugar and just let them stew on the stove top. The topping, I let sugar kind of almost come to a caramel, kind of like a griddle. Why did you choose not to bake a cheesecake and go with something that was just set in a fridge. I like the fluffiness that it kind of adds to this take on it versus the baked. What are you looking for inside that cheesecake? It's going to be creamy. And then you have the texture. You have the texture on top. And then you have the berries that will give us all just like a contrast of flavors, but they'll all work really well together. It's incredibly fragrant. There's a fresh vanilla bean in there. Right, Lee, what are you hoping for inside that cheesecake? But it'll be lighter, definitely sweet, and some citrus hints from some lemon juice and a little bit of Grand Marnier. One bite of cheesecake is the difference separating you both right now. It's actually a lot lighter than it looks. The base is done perfectly. You pull that off, and it complements the tart sweetness of the cheesecake. Honestly, Lee and Whitney, this is the closest I've ever had to judge two dishes and to nominate one winning dish, because they both taste superb. The person joining David Miller in the final of the first ever MasterChef. Congratulations to... Whitney. That cheesecake is unique. Texture, flavor, and with that modern interpretation, you took a huge risk, and it worked. I'm definitely feeling proud of myself. Here I am now, going into the finals of America's First Master Chef, and this means the world to me. Lee, you've gone through one hell of a journey. That is an amazing cheesecake, and you know damn well you hold a future in this industry. That is a dish to be proud of. Can I have my mom just come and try my food? Please. Having spent so long on an airplane traveling <laughs> 7,000 miles, I'd love you to come down. <laughs> Hannah, what do you think? Amazing. I, 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 I don't know where can you, he Can got... you join the judges, maybe, for yeah. the fourth vote? <laughs> no problem. No problem. Mm. I came out a winner today because I had the opportunity to cook for my mom.
And all, you know, competition aside, that, that to me means more than anything. And it just tells me that I am doing the right thing with my life. Oh, I'm so proud of you, sweetheart. Lee, it's been an amazing journey. Yes, it has, Chef. I promise you, you hold the most amazing future. Grab it with both hands. Thank you so much. Go, ladies. <laughs> this whole experience just strengthened my belief that I did find my calling in life. I think this dish delivers on multiple levels. You talk like a chef. You're very passionate. Congratulations. It showed me that I have the potential, that I have the talent to really grab it and make the most of it. And that's exactly what I'm going to be working on. You have gone from down here to jumping up to the top. You're forced to be reckoned with. This is the best and the most unique dish in the history of MasterChef. The education that I got from this whole experience is worth just as much as a quarter of a million dollars. Coming up next, it's David versus Whitney in the grand finale. These next two hours are the most important of your lives. The Massachusetts Gourmet. I think I'm going to be America's first master chef. Versus the down-home Mississippi girl. That title is mine. They're about to cook the three most important dishes of their lives, but only one will win $250,000, a cookbook publishing deal, and the title of America's first master chef. Amazing! It's David versus Whitney in the grand finale. These next two hours are the most important of your lives. They are about to cook the most important dishes of their lives, but only one will become America's first master chef. Amazing! Welcome to the Master Chef main event. It began with tens of thousands of amateur cooks across the country, hoping for a unique opportunity to be crowned America's first ever master chef. We're now down to our final two. Whitney, a 22-year-old student who's become a force to be reckoned with, can the pastry princess become master chef? I might be small, I might be young, but I'm fierce in the kitchen. That title is mine. And David, a software engineer from Boston who shed his arrogance and has blown us away with these dishes to become a true contender for the title. It comes down to one final battle, and, uh, and I'm, I'm coming out on top. I will be America's first master chef. One of these two finalists will win a quarter of a million dollars and be given a unique opportunity to publish their very own cookbook and earn the distinction of becoming the first ever American Master Chef. And it's all happening tonight. Whitney and David, please go to your stations. Okay, these next two hours are about to become the most important of your lives. You're about to propel yourself into a league of super chefs. In this, the grand finale, David and Whitney will make their best three dishes. A mouth-watering appetizer, perfect entree, and delicious dessert. After tasting, Gordon, Graham, and Joe will decide which amateur cook will be crowned America's first master chef. Whitney, give me an insight to your best ever appetizer your most sought-after entree, and one of the most delicious desserts you've ever cooked. My appetizer would be a crispy corn cake topped with a black-eyed pea puree, a shrimp, and a turnip green pesto. The entree would be a country fried chicken atop creamy collard greens. Wow. And then the dessert would be a twist on a classic bread pudding, and it's a white chocolate bread pudding, but it's pureed, and so it's a light, fluffy texture with a white chocolate sauce and raspberry coulis. Dave. For the appetizer, it would have to be a scallop ceviche served with a cream of fresh pea and mint soup. For the entree, you know, I've, I've got to go with the beef wellington. Wow. That's mm. one of my signature dishes. Uh, I'm well aware. A tall order, and it took me a good few years to perfect. If it's done right, it's fantastic. 
I love your confidence, Jared. <laughs> I absolutely love it. And for dessert? For dessert, um, I have to go with uh, nectarine crepes. Wow. Again, another one of my favorite dishes. <laughs> all six dishes sound amazing. You've already beaten a lot of deserving individuals along this journey. They would give absolutely anything today to be standing in your shoes right now. But don't take my word for it. Take theirs. <laughs> Hello to your former competitors. With the exception of Dave and Whitney, please, everybody up there, let's go. Wish them luck. <laughs> the best dishes you've ever cooked in your entire lives. A stunning appetizer a phenomenal entree, and finally, a unique dessert. Three dishes, two hours, one winner. Let the MasterChef final begin. Off you go. Good luck. Let's go. I'm rooting for the girl who took me down, Whitney. I'm rooting for Dave. He was the person I was putting more stock into. I'm rooting for that Mississippi girl, Whitney. Whitney is going to bring it for the girls down south. Dave is going to be the one. I'd like to see Whitney win. I was rooting for Whitney. Nothing is going to get in my way. That title is mine. I think I'm going to do it. I think I'm going to be America's first master chef. <laughs> totally squared off in the big cook-off here between a restaurant-style menu yeah. and a home-cooked menu. Humble. Home style, right. but done with a modern twist. Right. Whitney will prepare a corn cake appetizer topped with a black-eyed pea puree, shrimp, and turnip green pesto, followed by country fried chicken on a bed of collard greens, and ending with a white chocolate bread pudding with raspberry coulis. If he underestimates Whitney, he's got another thing coming. Ed's bitten everybody in the backside before. David will prepare scallop ceviche with fresh pea and mint soup appetizer, followed by beef wellington and ending with a nectarine crepe. If he pulls this menu off mm -hmm. with that level of intricacy, he's going to kick her butt, right? Let's get that right. Let's look at the appetizers. I am fascinated to taste that marinated ceviche scallop yeah. and the chilled pea soup. Again, as always, from David Middle, a lot of unorthodox, untraditional technique that sometimes has led to victory. Let's see what he does today. We've got the scallop ceviche. Bright, spicy. Alongside this creamy, chill, fresh pea soup with mint. You would never put those together, but I would. Perfect. Appetizer crispy corn cake with a black eyed pea puree, a turnip green pesto, and a shrimp on top. I mean, that is so many different things going on at one time. The thing with Whitney's appetizer, even though it is kind of low country cuisine, yep. the fact that she's elevating it by taking the black eyed peas, making a nice puree mm -hmm. of them, as well as taking the turnip green and making a pesto. I've never seen that done before. No, what no. a great use no. of a green that most people throw away. Yeah. It's rustic. It'll probably be delicious. My question is, is she bringing dishes that will grab our attention and really say, wow, does it have what it takes to win MasterChef? That was a scallop. Uh, good. They're fresh. If I start keeling over in pain halfway through, you will know the scallops are no good. <laughs> the scallop ceviche. And he's laughing and joking now. Let me know in 25 minutes what time it is. Yeah, look at the difference on their faces. One is so focused, and so concentrated. Everyone wants to play to the audience. Nice. Can you smell that? <laughs> uh, listen, one 
little piece of advice, yeah? Let's talk in more focus. Forget them. Shut them down. She hasn't said one word to anybody yet. She's in the zone. I need you to get in that zone. Focus. I know what you like when you can focus. You got it. Thank you, Chef. OK, let's do it. With just half the time remaining, David and Whitney move on to their desserts. But Whitney seems to be deviating from her original plan and is now making a souffle. Why would Whitney change at the very last minute and start attempting to do a souffle when a stunning white chocolate bread and butter pudding can be the most delicious yeah. dessert anywhere in the world? Mm -hmm. I don't understand why she'd need to risk everything now over that. Imagine the irony if the pastry princess was taken down by her dessert. Yeah. Stay focused, Whitney. Go with your gut. Go with your gut, girl. Which is the dish you're most nervous about out of the three? Is it the dessert, entree, or appetizer? Sadly, my dessert, because... Which is the first time I've ever heard you talk like that. I know. You've never been nervous or intimidated by a dessert. Is it because you've turned the dessert into a souffle now? Yeah. Souffles are so temperamental. They can overcook, and then you're going to have this really yucky te texture. Or you could undercook it, and it could be a big, gooey mess. That doesn't work. Yeah, it's going to cost you a quarter million dollars. Oh, man. With 45 minutes left to go, David and Whitney are now focused on the finish line and putting everything they have into their entrees. The great thing about chanterelles is that they're so firm and you have a yeah, great texture. texture that when you sear, yeah, they get a, a beautiful caramelization and earthiness to them. Okay. He's taken one of the most expensive, delicious, flavorful mushrooms in the entire world and put it into a food processor and turned it into a puree. And lost flavor. And lost flavor. Oh, my God. That is a very big mistake. Beef Wellington, I know how many times that could go wrong across the cooking process. Pastry splitting, right. beef undercooked. To wrap it up and not be able to see it and kind of cook blind cook and blind. then yeah. slice into it. If and that see beef it. is undercooked and you slice through, you can't recook really that. David. Yes, chef. Three difficult dishes. Yes, chef. Yeah? Wellington especially. What's the one dish you're most nervous about? The Wellington for you. The Wellington. Yeah, absolutely. The secret of that is letting it rest, not slicing that open too early. Anybody who's going to serve a beef Wellington to Gordon Ramsay had better know what they're doing. You know how difficult those Wellingtons are to cook? Yes, sir. You picked some of the most expensive ingredients anywhere in the world <laughs> against Whitney, who has some of the cheapest ingredients. Yes, a sir. A fillet of beef against a breast of chicken. Yes, sir. You're going all out. I am. You've got to make them work. Yes, sir. The chicken. Are you pounding the chicken? Put it into the marinade or? Yes, I'm doing it like a country fried steak, but doing chicken. My cooking and southern cooking is taking ordinary ingredients that don't cost that much, like collard greens or turnip greens, and elevating them to something so much more. Steak fried chicken breast, you're talking about one of the poorest proteins cooked in the poorest way, a true southern tradition. And she's taking that tradition and technique and applying it to her chances to win the first ever title of American MasterChef. Yeah. Now that's risky stuff. For David, it's the moment of truth as he prepares to slice into the beef wellington, a dish that took Chef Ramsay years to perfect. Dave. Come on, Dave. With a quarter million dollars on the line, overcooked or undercooked, there is no turning back. <laughs> How is it, David? Perfect! Way to go! 15 minutes to go! If there's anything that's gonna take Whitney down, it is her time management skills. Every competition, she is down to the last 30 seconds. We're now with 10 minutes left in the first ever final of MasterChef. Keep it going, Whitney. Dave, come on. Keep it going. I am trying to hurry up and plate because I really want to make sure I have time to make my plates look beautiful. Run, baby, run. Yeah, wait, wait. There's 
a lot riding on this dish that I was presenting to them, and it had to be amazing. Oh, oh wow. shoot. Oh, Whitney. In the first ever final of MasterChef, keep it going. Here we go. Oh, 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 Whitney. She dropped the chicken. She dropped the chicken. It's okay. It's okay. I cooked my heart out for the past two hours and put everything in me into those dishes. It's okay, it's okay. You got it. I've left school, my family, everything that means the world to me because I wanted this title. Go away. Oh, come on, Adam, go on. Good, baby. Somebody was going home and I didn't want that to be me. I feel like everybody that's watching me, my family, they're all rooting for me. And I'm thinking, Whitney, you're not letting that title slip from your hands. It's so close. I just buckled it up and went into overdrive. Come on, y'all. Come on. Come on, Whitney. Come on, Whitney. You got five minutes to go. The last ever five minutes in the Master Chef final. Come on, guys. Keep it going, Whitney. Dave, come on. Good girl. Good girl. Keep it going. Woo! You did it, baby. You did it. One minute to go. Come on, guys. Come on. Guys, yes, yes. All right, Dave. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Stop. Bring it. Oh. We got one word. Amazing. Right, contestants, families, and friends, there's one thing you won't be watching, and that's us tasting all six dishes, not here, but inside the MasterChef restaurant. We'll meet you in there, both of you, with your appetizers. Good luck. Good luck. Let's go. If you'd asked me six weeks ago whether or not I'd have the opportunity to win MasterChef, I would have said not a chance in hell. Sitting here now, in the final two, I think I'm going to do it. I think I'm going to be America's first MasterChef. There's a lot riding on this one dish that I was presenting to them because I seriously want that title. Like, I want it so bad. Whitney and David will present the three courses one dish at a time for the judges to taste. The finalist with the best overall meal will become America's first master chef. What a phenomenal two hours. Well done. Thank you. To you both. Good job. OK, appetizers, please. They smell delicious. Dave, please, what is it? We've got a uh, sea scallop ceviche served alongside a cream of fresh pea and mint soup. Wonderful. David, do we pour the soup over or just sip? Personally, I would not eat them together. They're there as a complete and total contrast separately. Sorry, excuse me. 
just to stop there. You wouldn't eat them together, so why are they on the same plate? Um, again, they independently, they don't work. So it's not an appetizer, it's two courses on one plate? I did it intentionally so that they would be separate. Plates. OK, let's go. Please, what is it? Got a uh, sea scallop ceviche served alongside a cream of fresh pea and mint soup. <laughs> Could you just run through what exactly you put in the bottom of the shot glass with the scallops? There is a touch of, maybe more than a touch of, uh, jalapenos. Got that song. <clears throat> okay. Whitney, describe your dish, please. I have a crispy corn cake, and on top is a black eyed pea puree with a turnip green pesto and shrimp. Do you think that some of these uh, ingredients that you put here are a little bit unorthodox, kind of the combination, or is it, it all makes sense in your mind? When you taste it, you'll taste the different flavors, the textures, and I think they all really work well together. How do you cook the shrimp? I made almost like a crab bowl, seasoned the water with salt, add onion, and then dropped it in there to add flavor. I wonder if these shrimp are actually cooked. How long did you boil them for? Um, I boiled them for about three minutes. Thank you, Whitney. Thank you, David. Next, bring us both your entree, please. Thank you. Let's start off with uh, Dave, shall we? I like the heat. I mean, maybe it's a personal thing, but it's fabulous contrast of acid and base. It's textbook. And that contrast on your palate is very, very intriguing and ultimately very powerful. But hold on, the jalapeno pepper is way too powerful. I think the dish in this presentation and the concept really works. It's like a yin and a yang. It's very powerful. It stops you in your tracks and say, wow, someone's really thinking about flavors in my dining experience here. My big question is, why was he so lacking in confidence and telling us not to eat it together when you serve it together? I, I, I think that his confidence is a front. He's an intuitive cook. He can put it on the plate. I don't think he can communicate it well, and I think in this high-pressure scenario, he's breaking. He's mm -hmm. cracking. That is a better appetizer than you will get in most restaurants. OK. And um, witness. Black eye pea puree, delicious. And it's quite a invention to have the balls to puree that. The corn cake looks Perfectly griddled. Seasoned nicely. Seasoned nicely. This is true southern food. She's trying to elevate mm -hmm. it to a different level. But if the shrimp had been cooked more, this could be a delicious but dish. Both dishes have got highs yeah, and lows. Very tough. I am beyond proud of myself. It is the most stunning beef wellington I personally have ever made. But is Whitney's seven-minute chicken cooked to perfection or raw, which can cost her the title? I was very nervous about whether or not my chicken was going to be done. I mean, my adrenaline is pumping like crazy. Thank you. Entrees, please. OK. Dave, explain exactly what your dish is, please. It is a traditional beef wellington. Beef tenderloin wrapped with prosciutto, a ducelle of mushrooms, a touch of uh, foie gras pâté, wrapped in puff pastry, and uh, baked. I've made these a thousand times. I'm so excited to taste this. I want this sort of almost to melt in my mouth. Is that my expectation? Yes, chef. Beef, seared beautifully, seasoned perfectly. Here's the thing. You took the best cut of beef anywhere in the world and made your life difficult with it. In the most pressurized contest anywhere in America tonight. And it's not bad, but it's not perfect. You had two up your sleeve. 
and wrapped up both of them and then opened up one, sliced it, two more minutes, and then you're going to hit perfection. To help me to understand, why would you pick a dish that took me a thousand times to get right? You're good enough to be perfect. That's what I tried to say to you earlier. Use your time wisely. I've seen you focus in a way that is so admirable. David, I can see the regret welling in your eyes. And don't, don't, don't do that. A ton of, a ton of technique involved in that. Whitney, talk us through your dish. I have a pan-fried, country-fried chicken over creamed collard greens. When I get my excitement watching you cook, at the age of 22, you've got something that all three of us can never teach you. You have an amazing palate, and that's why you're standing in the final of MasterChef. What I'm more nervous about is pink chicken. You got seven minutes left, and you dropped the original chicken. Cooking a chicken breast in seven minutes is virtually impossible. Is this one good? Because if that's raw, we cannot taste this dish. How do you know that chicken is cooked? Um, I mean, I don't know, but... He didn't even touch it before it went on a plate. Cooking a chicken breast in seven minutes is virtually impossible. I'm taking the thickest end, but that's raw. We cannot taste this dish. Whitney. It's cooked perfectly. I was freaking out. I was like, seriously, you have a chance now, Whitney. You have a chance. It's like creamed, textured spinach, but with a much cheaper, humble ingredients. Are collard greens cheaper than spinach? Yeah, much cheaper. They give them away. Yeah, exactly. They do. Collard is something that you have to cook at a very low temperature for a long time. You cut them extremely thin. That was really smart. You've uh, managed again to uh, execute a very well-cooked uh, chicken breast. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Dave, Whitney, please bring in your final dishes. Thank you. It's fancy versus simple, at-home gourmet versus southern hospitality beauty. Mm -hmm. This is something that you would get at a diner in the low country. Mm -hmm. And Dave's is something that you would order at a very fine restaurant in New York City. Mm -hmm. So again, it is the culinary civil war, north versus <laughs> south. That dish has got great potential. There's no two ways about it. He just needs to make it another 500 times before he perfects it. Right. The buttermilk chicken. Unbelievable. Uh, unbelievable. And she did it with seven minutes to go. Right. Ready for dessert? Yep. Let's do it. <laughs> Even though I knew how important this was, I was like, you're not letting that title slip from your hands. It's so close. It comes down to one final battle, and, uh, and I'm, I'm coming out on top. Right. Dave, what is that? It is a uh, nectarine crepe Suzette style. Talk to me about the nectarines. What did you do? Sauteed them in butter and brown sugar and flambéed with cognac. The secret of a good crepe is the color and the thinness and the texture, and of course, the filling. Crepes, nice and thin. That's good. Really good indeed. I think I like the filling a little better than the actual crepe on this one. It's very, very bon. Very good. Merci. Whitney, what is that? 
It's a white chocolate bread pudding, but I put my own spin on it and made it more of like a souffle and I have a white chocolate sauce with a little bit of raspberry coulis. First thing I got taught in Paris was never, ever turn out a souffle out of its mold. Why would you turn out a souffle? I wanted it to be able to eat it with the sauce. It's a take on somewhat of a souffle, but more of a bread pudding style. The texture's moist in the center. Two very delicious desserts, really good desserts. And now we have some serious thinking to do. Next time you see us, we'll be announcing the winner of the first ever MasterChef. Go back through the kitchen. Thank well you done. Thank very much. Good luck. That ended on a high. Amazing. Unbelievable. Delicious. Both incredible flavors. Yeah. Wow. It's like they've switched roles. Mm -hmm. She's gone for the sort of David Miller type over ambitious <laughs> dessert, and he's played safe to something charming. I definitely would have expected to see that from her. Yeah, and what was the method in her madness? A souffle's hard enough. Tipping it out onto a base of white chocolate sauce with fresh raspberries, I mean, is she crazy? Based on their three dishes, the judges must now decide who is the first ever American master chef. I think David really excelled. With the, uh, with the appetizer course. Intelligent plating, real restaurant-y style food. Very chef-y, very, very ambitious. Very ambitious. To survey an appetizer in two shot glasses with that kind of creativity, you know, only a professional chef would attempt to do that. The thought process behind it was light years ahead of what Whitney put up. And I think that where Whitney went wrong is that she went away from her instinct and tried yeah. to intellectualize a dish, yeah. taking southern ingredients techniques and making okay. a restaurant style dish, and it didn't work. Yeah. However, flip over the entree and she pulled it off because 100%. that chicken was absolutely delicious. But two things on the plate and it sang. It was incredible. It was a beautiful duet. And the chicken, she nailed it. Seven minutes. I don't know if she was lucky. How? I have no but idea. How? Both, Seven minutes. both sides, though, it wasn't a fluke because if you look over the entire chicken, that. evenly cooked, yeah. gorgeous, golden, all around. And dessert. I mean, two high points in terms of a modern interpretation of a mm -hmm. souffle and then a classic. The crepe was excellent. I couldn't yeah. stop eating it. The crepe was simply delicious. Whitney's souffle, I've got to give her incredible credit for tempting a souffle in the final. The actual cookery and technique that's involved in this, I thought it was an amazing example of taking something and, mm. and making it modern. better and more modern. More modern. Unfortunately, there can only be one master chef. OK, let's go. The title of master chef means the title of lead software engineer goes out the window. It is a chance to break through into a bright, new, and exciting world. And to be fast-tracked into that position is a dream. This is my biggest dream ever. I'm just a small-town girl, and my dream is to really have my own catering business. So becoming America's first master chef will change my life completely. Both of you arrived inside our chef kitchen as amateur cooks. On tonight's performance, both of you cook like professionals. You now deserve the right to stand here, right now. Let's go. Huh? Come on. Well done to you both. This has been a very tough decision. And the winner of America's first ever MasterChef comes with a quarter million dollars and a unique opportunity, your very own cookbook. It doesn't get any better than that. And that person is the winner of America's first ever MasterChef goes to
This has been a very tough decision. And the winner of America's first ever MasterChef comes with a quarter million dollars and a unique opportunity, your very own cookbook. The winner of America's first ever MasterChef goes to Whitney! <laughs> amazing! Absolutely amazing! I'm so excited and I just really want to tell everybody that, you know what, if you have a dream, go after it. My dream was the title of America's First Master Chef and I cannot be any more happy than I am right now. Whitney, you're not allowed to drink. <laughs> Is this a dream come true? Not only for my wife and I, but for Whitney. We are just all so proud of her. I'm beyond proud of myself. Even having the opportunity to even cook for these guys to show them that I do have what it takes, you know, but Wow. Next to that one, she puts me to shame, and I know she's going to build that catering business that she's always wanted. The first ever American Master Chef, Whitney! Well it's just indescribable. I don't even know how to explain how happy I am right now. I'm definitely going to have my seven minute chicken in the cookbook. Amazing, amazing, amazing. <laughs>